Hey, what is up, Flavor Family? It's Bobby, and today we are gonna rock five epic, low-carb, keto meal prep recipes that I know you guys are gonna love. These are so darn easy to make, but they're creative and full of flavor and make you excited about eating low-carb. So whether you're on keto, you just started keto, you want low-carb recipes, or you're looking for healthy, clean eating for the new year, we're gonna hook you up. But before we get to these recipes, hook me up and subscribe to my channel because every week, Come on, we're rocking out some of the best, most tasty recipes on YouTube, and I would love for you to join the Flav City community. All right, the first recipe is quite possibly my most popular and my favorite keto recipe I've ever made. The flavors are off the charts. It's Moroccan chicken stew with olives and roasted peppers served with a golden cauliflower rice with citrus and coconuts. Forget about keto. The flavors on this are next level for any kind of recipe. It's really delicious and easy to make. Here's how you do it. Start off with 10 boneless and skinless chicken thighs. To make the Moroccan spice rub, add one teaspoon each of smoked paprika and ground cumin to a small bowl. Go in with half a teaspoon of ground coriander, a quarter teaspoon of ground cinnamon, and an eighth teaspoon of ground cloves. First season the chicken with a generous pinch of kosher salt, then half of the spice rub. Flip over the chicken, and add some more salt and some more spice rub. Add a shot of avocado oil to the chicken and really rub those spices in. That way it can really penetrate into the chicken. Then add a couple teaspoons of avocado oil to a cast iron pan. Add half of the chicken to the pan and let it cook for about three minutes until it's nice and golden on the first side. Flip it over, let it go another three minutes and then remove it from the pan. It's still raw at this point, but it's seared and crusty. To build the base of our chicken stew, add another shot of oil to the same pan. Then go in with half an onion that's been roughly chopped one medium-sized zucchini that's been cubed, along with half a teaspoon of dried thyme, just under a half a teaspoon of kosher salt, a few cracks of black pepper. Give that a mix up and let it cook for a good eight minutes. Then add three kilos of garlic that have been finely minced. For some sweetness, six ounces of roasted red peppers. And for a bit of saltiness, half a cup of good quality green olives that have been chopped. Then get that seared chicken back into the pan and make sure you tip in all of those juices. There's lots of flavor in there. Add enough chicken stock to come about halfway up the chicken. Then finally slice three or four slices of lemon. Add that to the pan. Take one fresh red chili, finely slice that. You can also use red pepper flakes. Bring the pot to a simmer and let it cook for about 20 to 25 minutes. The sauce will reduce by over half. The chicken will be nice and juicy and tell me that pot of chicken does not look awesome. For the golden cauliflower rice, add a couple shots of avocado oil to a preheating pan. Then add half an onion that's been finely diced along with a quarter teaspoon of salt, a few cracks of black pepper. Give that a mix and let it cook for a good six to seven minutes. Then add three cloves of garlic that are finely minced and take some freshly peeled ginger, run it back and forth on the microplane, and add one teaspoon to the pan. To make the cauliflower rice gold, add one tablespoon of turmeric powder, and then cook that for a good minute. That way you bloom the essential oils and the flavor really comes out. Then add one cup of full fat coconut milk, along with a quarter teaspoon of salt, a few cracks of black pepper, and just simmer that for a few minutes until it reduces by half. Then grate some fresh cauliflower on the largest setting of your box grater. You'll need a total of five and a half cups. Add that to the pan and then slap a lid down and cook it over medium low heat for about five minutes just until it's cooked through. Now to make this dish over the top, add the zest of half a lime and the zest of half an orange and then shake in three tablespoons of unsweetened shredded coconut flakes. Whoops, <laughs> that was a little more than three tablespoons. Let me get that out of there. Add some chopped almonds for crunch, some freshly chopped parsley, and some more of that red chili for heat. Give that rice a good mix up. And to plate this dish, scoop down a couple of scoops of that golden cauliflower rice onto a plate. Top it off with those perfectly cooked juicy chicken thighs. And then don't forget to spoon over some of the roasted red peppers and olives and juice all over the top. This, my friends, is seriously huge on flavor and you're gonna be so happy you have five servings of meal prep for the week. Next up, Desi and I are making a recipe that was inspired by a recent trip to Jordan and Israel. The flavors are next level and so is the keto pita bread that is so delicious that you wrap some delicious spiced lamb kefta in and top it off with a creamy tahini sauce. It's the most delicious meal prep that makes five servings for the week and here's how you do it. To make the kebabs, I have two pounds of ground lamb here. I'm gonna make a nice spice rub, starting with one and a half teaspoons each of smoked paprika and ground cumin, one teaspoon of ground coriander, half a teaspoon of cinnamon, a quarter teaspoon each of ground cloves and cardamom, and one teaspoon of dried thyme. Add these spices to the ground lamb, 
and then go ahead and zest one lemon into the mixture and then use the same microplaner to finely grate two cloves of garlic directly into the lamb. Go in with one teaspoon of kosher salt, a few cracks of black pepper, and then a couple tablespoons of freshly chopped parsley or cilantro. And then use your hands to mix up everything very well. The best way to form the kefta is to dip your hands in some cold water and then form them into about eight football-sized kefta. The water prevents the lamb mixture from sticking to your hand and getting really clumpy. Stash the kebabs in the fridge for about 20 minutes so they can firm up. When ready to cook them, add a couple shots of avocado or olive oil to a nonstick pan preheating over medium high heat. Then let them cook about five minutes on the first side, undisturbed, don't touch them. Give them a flip and look at that, nice and crusty. That's adding so much flavor, so much texture. Let them go another five minutes on the second side and then you can hit them for about one minute on each side if you need to and get them out of the pan and look at those nice and crusty on the outside and perfectly juicy on the inside now desi is going to make the keto flatbread by lightly whisking two eggs in a bowl and then adding two teaspoons of baking powder and a half a teaspoon of kosher salt then add two cups of finely grated low moisture mozzarella cheese you can buy this at trader joe's mix it all up really well then add one and a half cups of almond flour mix it up really well and then form it into a ball of dough using your hands transfer it to a board and then cut it into five equal pieces. Place the dough rounds in between two pieces of parchment paper and then use a rolling pin to roll them out into five thin pitas, about a quarter inch thick each. Sprinkle a little bit of dried thyme on top, transfer them to a sheet tray and bake them in a 400 degree oven for 10 minutes until golden brown. And just look at those flatbreads, golden brown and delicious. You can see that bubbly golden cheese and it's nice and soft and pliable. Last up, let's make the creamy tahini sauce by adding a third of a cup of runny tahini to a small food processor. Squeeze the juice of one lemon into two cloves of garlic that are finely grated and then add that to the food processor. Blend it all up and then add some ice cold water. The cold water will prevent the uh, sesame seed paste from turning bitter from the heat. Add enough water to make it loose but still thick and pourable. And that's what you're looking for. That kind of texture right there. To plate this dish, lay out one of the keto pita breads, smear over a good amount of that creamy tahini sauce, grab one of those lamb kefta, slice them up. Ooh, look how juicy that is. Perfectly cooked. Give it a rough chop and then put it on top of the pita. Top it with some cherry tomatoes, some sliced onions, some more of that tahini sauce, and some fresh parsley. And there it is, you guys. Lamb kebabs with keto pita bread. So tasty, you're gonna be so happy you made this for five servings for the week. Next up, we're doing a good old Southern keto barbecue recipe with the best technique ever for making bone on, skin on chicken thighs. You get them super duper crusty in the pan, then in the oven, and then paint on this Alabama white barbecue sauce that's so tangy and serve it with a black bean and spinach salad. Hey, I thought you couldn't eat black beans on keto. That is until now, here's how you do it. This recipe starts with 10 bone-on, skin-on chicken thighs. I'm gonna make an easy spice rub with one and a half teaspoons of smoked paprika and a quarter teaspoon of cayenne pepper. Mix that up, dust the top side of the chicken with a generous pinch of salt, and then shake over a good amount of spice rub. Add some avocado oil to a cast iron pan preheating just below medium high, and then add half of the chicken thighs, skin side down, and then season the other side with a good pinch of salt. Let them cook for eight minutes undisturbed, and then check out that crust. Beautiful, right? Golden brown, crispy, all that fat is rendering out. Now transfer the pan to a 475 degree Fahrenheit oven and let it cook for 10 minutes. Give the chicken a flip. Look at that crust, you guys. That is what I'm talking about. Let it cook for three more minutes and then get it out of the oven and perfect. The chicken is juicy as can be. That skin is crusty and golden. To make the Alabama white barbecue sauce, start with half a cup of full fat mayonnaise in a bowl and then add one teaspoon of stone ground mustard. Grate in one clove of garlic. For a little bit of heat, add half a teaspoon of prepared horseradish. Then go in with one tablespoon of white vinegar. Slice a lemon in half and then add the juice of one lemon along with a quarter teaspoon of salt and a few cracks of black pepper. Give that a good mix up and that's what you want. It's kind of loose and pourable, but still thick. For the keto black beans, add a shot of avocado oil to a pan, and then add two ounces of thick cut bacon that's cubed. Cook that for about five or six minutes until most of the fat has rendered out. Then add a quarter cup of red onions that have been chopped, along with a quarter teaspoon of red pepper flakes, a little pinch of salt, a few cracks of black pepper. Mix that up, then go in with two cloves of garlic that are finely minced, and then two and a half cups of cooked black soybeans. Then go in with half a cup of chicken broth or chicken stock. Give that a mix and let it cook for about 10 minutes. Then roughly chop one cup of spinach, add that to the pot. 
along with a couple teaspoons of coconut aminos and half a teaspoon of toasted sesame oil. And at the end, add a quarter cup of red bell peppers diced. That way you kind of have raw crunchy peppers and cooked beans and veggies. Give it a mix up and that's done. To plate this dish, put down a big scoop of the black beans on a plate. Top it with a couple of those crispy chicken thighs. And then the best part, paint it all over with that Alabama white barbecue sauce. Make it nice and tangy and that's it. Meal prep makes five servings and that is seriously good Southern keto comfort food. All right, next up, we're doing a funky little take on meatloaf as if meatloaf weren't good enough already. We're gonna stuff it with cheese and prosciutto, then roll it up, put some keto ketchup on top and bake it in the oven. That way when you cut into it, it's oozy and cheesy and serve it with some blistered Japanese eggplant and broccolini with fried shallots and garlic. Yes, it is as good as it sounds and here's how you do it. To start the meatloaf, add a couple shots of avocado oil to a pan. Then add half an onion that's been diced and one green bell pepper along with a half a teaspoon of salt and a few cracks of black pepper. And then add half a teaspoon of dried thyme. Give that a mix up and let it cook for a good eight to 10 minutes. Meanwhile, crack in two eggs to two pounds of ground beef. Grate in a quarter cup of Parmesan or Pecorino Romano cheese. And then add just under a teaspoon of kosher salt, a few cracks of black pepper. Now add a few cloves of garlic that have been minced to the pan with the veggies. Once the veggies are soft and wilted, go ahead and add that to the meatloaf mixture. It's okay that the veggies are hot. We're going to bake the meatloaf immediately. Now this is a job for Desi because it requires some skill. You have to flatten out the meatloaf mixture into a 9 by 10 shape. Do that on a piece of parchment paper. Then take a quarter pound of sliced prosciutto and lay that down and then top that with five ounces of sliced provolone cheese. Just shingle it right over the prosciutto and then tightly wrap it all up using the parchment paper as a guide and then pinch off the ends. Make sure they're closed and pop it into a meatloaf tin. Spoon over as much sugar-free keto ketchup as you want, and then pop it in a 350 degree oven for 75 minutes. Meanwhile, we can get onto the veggie side dish. Add a good pinch of salt to a pot of boiling water, and then add eight ounces of broccolini and cook that for just a few minutes. Thoroughly drain the broccolini, and then chop it into large bite-sized pieces and set it aside. Then add a couple tablespoons of avocado oil to a large nonstick pan. Then add half a teaspoon of mustard seeds. And then finally chop some shallots and thinly slice some garlic and add that to the pan and let it fry for just about one to two minutes. That way it infuses the oil with that yummy flavor and it gets nice and crispy and we can garnish with that later on. Next, chop one large Japanese eggplant to large bite-sized pieces and then add that to the pan with the infused oil along with the broccolini. Cook the veggies for about seven or eight minutes until they're nice and charred on the outside. Once that meatloaf has been out of the oven and cooled down for about 20 minutes, let's cut into it. Perfect. You can see that cheese and that prosciutto and the meat is perfectly cooked. Let's slice a couple pieces. Man, so juicy. Put that down on a plate along with a big healthy scoop of the veggies and then top it off with those crispy shallots and garlic and it's done. This meal prep recipe makes five meals of serious comfort food and you're gonna love it. Last up, we're making a keto burrito bowl. And trust me, they don't have anything like this over at Chipotle. It's Al Pastor spiced pork chops over a bed of Mexican dirty cauliflower rice topped with all the fixins. It's everything you want for lunch or dinner. And here's how you make it. Start off with five boneless pork chops, about five ounces each. To make the spice rub, add one teaspoon each of smoked paprika, ancho chili powder, and ground cumin to a small bowl. And then give that a mix up. Dust over a good amount of kosher salt on the pork chops and then half the spice rub. Flip them over, do some more salt and some more spice rub and then just drizzle over a little bit of oil. Let the pork sit at room temperature for 20 minutes so they're not cold. Add a couple shots of avocado oil to a preheating cast iron pan. Add the pork chops to the pan and let them cook four to five minutes undisturbed. That way the spice crust can really form. Give them a flip over and that's what I'm talking about. Look at that beautiful crusty crust. Let them go another four minutes and then get them out of the pan. Do not overcook pork chops. They get dry really easily, and these look crusty, juicy, and perfect. To start the Mexican cauliflower rice, add a couple shots of avocado oil to a preheating pan. Then go in with half an onion that's been finely chopped, along with a quarter teaspoon of red pepper flakes for some spice, and a quarter teaspoon of salt, a few cracks of pepper, and then mix that up and let it cook a good six or seven minutes. Then go in with two cloves of garlic that have been finely minced. So add a teaspoon each of ancho chili powder, ground cumin, and smoked paprika to the pan. And then cook that for a minute 
We want to bloom the essential oils in the spices and really bring out the flavor of those spices. Add a quarter cup of chicken stock or water to the pan and then grate five and a half cups of cauliflower rice on the biggest setting of your box grater. Add that to the pan and give it a really good mix up. And don't forget to season at this step too. So add a quarter teaspoon of salt and a few cracks of black pepper. Give that a mix up, slap down a lid and let it cook for about five minutes. To finish off the cauliflower rice, add the zest of half a lime and the juice of half a lime. And then a good shake of fresh cilantro, or if you don't like cilantro, you can use parsley. Give it a good mix up and the Mexican cauliflower rice is done. Now is the best part. Let's make that burrito bowl by adding a few scoops of the cauliflower rice to a bowl. Then add some shredded romaine lettuce and some chopped tomatoes. Place the pork chop on top of the burrito bowl. Shake over a few more of those tomatoes. Some grated cheddar cheese. Don't forget some sliced avocado and a nice scoop of sour cream. There it is, you guys. The ultimate low carb keto burrito bowl. They ain't got this at Chipotle. They don't have it at Taco Bell. You gotta make it and you'll be hooked up with five servings of meal prep for the week. There it is, you guys. Five epic keto meal prep recipes. You gotta rock. All the recipes are down below in the description box. When you make them, tag me on social media. I love seeing your creations. If you wanna see other keto recipes like Desi's keto fat bread or keto biscotti, if you got a little sweet tooth, I'll put those recipes down below in the description box. Share this video, sharing is caring. If you wanna see some more keto recipes, I'll put them below me right now, but we will see you very soon. Until then, hashtag keep on cooking and mad love.